from that day onward, I have been increasing my own percentage steadily. I'm not 90% yet, but I'm far from 10%. Dear Nigerian Christians, before you crucify a servant of God with the pedigree of Daddy G.O., over the tithe challenge he gave his church members, please watch this video to an end and let's understand the context of his sermon. After this, feel free to make your judgment as a devout believer in Jesus Christ, not as an angry critic. God said, I will see to it that your domain will have no, nobody, nobody who even think of tampering with you. I mean, by the time you read 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 24, 1 Kings 4, verse 24, the Bible tells us it has peace all around. Now that's dominion, man. Now, um, I'm going to be talking to everybody as soon as God permits me. I'm going to be apologizing for making a mistake, for saying that if we don't pay tight, you, you might not make it to heaven. I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's not in the Bible. What the Bible says is, is he has peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see God. Now, let me tell you. Listen to me. You know, it is possible to be right and wrong at the same time. I prove it to you. I mean, I'm a scientist, so I know that. For years, we taught that light travels in straight lines. Now, is that correct? At least those of you who know a little bit of physics will say, sure, the light doesn't bend at corners, it goes straight. But later on we discover it's not just what, not straight as a rod. Light travels in waves, going one direction, but in waves. It is wrong to limit you to 10%. At a time where some of you should be 20%, 20 30%, 40%. 10% should be for beginners. But, uh, I believe God will give me an opportunity very soon to tell you the details. Giving should be violently. Violently. You want to be the one in top? You want to be the one who will control finances? You're going to go far, far beyond 10%. I've told you the story before. <laughs> I don't know why I'm preaching this sermon before it is time, but 
Well, maybe because God wants you to hear it first. Several years ago, I went to Kenneth Trudin Camp Meeting program and they wanted to raise funds for their Bible college. And a man came on stage, got permission from them and said, please let me talk and call his wife. And they whispered. And the husband made the announcement. He said, my wife and I have agreed. Whatever all of you contribute is what we shall contribute. Everything, all of, uh, and at, the, at that meeting we were 17,000. So whatever all of you contribute, that's what my wife and I will contribute. Uh -huh. And those who didn't want to contribute before say, hey, you're in trouble. At the end of the day, people gave like, I mean, those who didn't want to give before gave angrily. At the end, he said, please count it, so I want to know. They counted the whole thing. $3.5 million. We said, huh, now you are in trouble. He answered and said, brethren, is that all you can do? So I decided, <laughs> this man knows something I don't know. I must find out his secret. After the service, I cornered him. Tell me your secret. I came all the way from Africa. He said, you want to know? I said, I want to know. He said, five years ago, I started the company with $500. And I said to God, you are my senior partner. The business is yours. Prosper the, job, the, the business. And I will not insult you with 10%. I will give you 90%. Oh, oh yes, I, I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard the story before. He says, sir, five years later, my turnover now is $50 million. I say, is that so? He say, yes. I say, okay, sir. Thank you. And from that day onward, I have been increasing my own percentage steadily. I'm not 90% yet. <laughs> but I'm far from 10%. It's wrong for me to say you should be pay only 10%. No, 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 no. Because we are going to dominate. <laughs> Whether you believe it or not, by the special grace of God, there are people here, when they are talking about the richest people in the whole world, they will mention your name. Violent giving. Number three, violent soul winning. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, from verse 5 to 8, Acts 5, Acts 8, 5 to 8, you know this story. Philip went to Samaria. Just one young fellow like you and turn the whole city upside down. Violence so winning. Somebody came to me, I think it was last month. He said they are talking of Vision 2032. I said, yes, so far of it. He said, yes. He said, Daddy, but I feel embarrassed. I said, what do you mean? He said, you mean we have to wait 10 years? 
He said, I thought you told us we should be doubling every year. Violent soul winning. So this is not how you began, Daddy. I said, no. Because I was, was telling the truth. I started so winning violently. The very first Easter, after I became born, I became born again in July. The following Easter, I took as many young people as would follow me to somewhere in Badagri. Easter Monday, I said, hey, let's go and let's go and enjoy Easter Monday. We went there. I told everybody, just bring whatever food you have. When we get there, we'll combine. Believe it or not, that is the credo of what became the Congress. I want so violently in my place of work at the University of Lagos. God may let you meet somebody who was there then. During break time, I compelled all those who are under my arm. I was a little big. Messengers, cleaners, typists, you must come to my office for Bible study by force. <laughs> but they began to enjoy it, and before you knew it, and no liar will make it to heaven. So you know this is, I'm telling you the truth. A time came that during break time in the Faculty of Science at the University of Lagos, you cannot find any typist at his post. You can't find a messenger. Why? Uh, when my office could no longer contain us, we find a classroom. Break time. Everybody's supposed to be on break. And they reported me to my head of department and he called me. Professor Chiki will be of blessed memory. Adeboye. I said, sir. And he said, I, I know anybody who says, uh, you don't talk about Jesus Christ, he's wasting his time. I said, thank you, sir. And he said, but you are turning the faculty upside down. I'm not asking you not to preach. I know if I say that, I'll be wasting my time. But could you please wait till we have closed officially for the day before you begin to do this thing you are doing? I said, thank you, sir. I agree. By force. I, I preached the gospel violently, violently, not gently. Nobody begged me. I knew how close I was to hell before God saved my soul. And then I began to have disciples who would preach violently. <laughs> and I remember a case when uh, one of my daughters was coming from Ilori to Ibadan and boarded a, a, a taxi. And there was one chronic uh, Muslim with him, with her in the car. As soon as they sat down and the taxi began to move towards him, she began to preach. And kept on and on. <laughs> By the time they got to Oyo, that uh, Muslim said, I want to come down. But you say you, are, you have paid for it, but they say, I, I want to come. Why? <laughs> Because my daughter won't let him rest. Violent evangelism. 